the name of it? What's the name of it? You're blocking that from all over. What's the name of it? Don't watch. Let's not go. Friend, I too wish your father had left, and I too wish that things could be the way that they were. Okay, okay. And I too wish that I could be one of the strong, independent mothers who suddenly become self-sufficient. But I'm not. Please, feel free to disagree. Mom, um, we've got a ten-hour drive ahead of us. We've got a lot of time. Why? Because God is testing us. 
He's watching to see if he'll choose his path. That's why every day we must ask ourselves, have I done the right thing? Have I done the right thing? Picking up my life, backing up the past. That's always frightening. Have I done the right thing? from Chicago. Ethel McCormick and Fastan... Ron, is it? Red. Ah! Speak up! Let the Lord hear your voice! Red. Red McCormick. Red. Interesting name. Is that short for something? Nope. There's rumors going round about the new kid And everybody's talking to the blue Cause you know how a stranger is If he's not dumb, he's dangerous But either way now I welcome you to join my wife, Vi, and our daughter, Ariel, in this morning's convocation. Back in your mouth and let's get out of here. See ya! 
Where do you think? Oh. And if the question ever comes up, if I was with you guys all evening, right? Are you asking us to live for it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, beautiful. Miss me? Hey, Ariel. Hey, Travis. Lyle. So who's that new guy in church today? Who? Oh, him. He's our new classmate. A Chicago transplant with all the charm and sophistication that comes with living in a bustling metropolis. Should I be jealous? I'm happy on it. Hey, Chuck, what do you think you're doing with the preacher's daughter? Anything that I want. <laughs> oh, yeah? What does she get out of it? Everything that she needs. She was born yesterday With her innocent looks and her little town away But she's smiling at me She's got angels in her eyes Well, she has to lose as her
pushing you. Get it? Got it. Now, let me ask you something. They are some men's clothes we got that hat? What's that? Some kind of stupid joke? Oh, that's a really good joke. Oh, that's it, man. I'm gonna kill you! Oh, please! Please, kill me! Kill me! Kill me! That's the most exciting thing I've heard since I hit town. <laughs> Ren McCormick. You are? Willard. Willard Hewitt. Let me ask you something, Willard. You do around here for a good time. <laughs> yeah, besides that, you got any clubs? No. What about movies? No. What about malls? No. What about. No, no, Ben, no. We do have the Bolorama down by the interstate. Wow. You know, I really do admire you. I could never do what you guys do around here. Yeah? What do we do? Nothing! I never walk when I can run I don't believe I ever could People try to slow me down Saying, boy, you really should Kick back and chill But I can't stand still Around here we walk I called the doctor, he said, son I cannot offer you a pill So I never found relief And now I've got to move until Accident. 
The Patani Bridge accident? You've never heard of the Patani Bridge accident? If I had, would I be doing this? Well, ladies, should I take this one? Please, you I guess. So there were these four kids we all grew up with. And they were heading back from a dance over in Baylor County. Maybe it was the rain that night. Maybe they were being a little wild, but somehow they lost control of the car. It crashed through the railing and fell 35 feet into the Patani River. Oh, did anybody survive? Oh, God. Yeah, when the Sheriff's Office published the autopsy report, it said that there was alcohol and marijuana in their blood. Well, the whole town went nuts. And that's when Reverend Moore got so righteous. He started blaming anything and everything on drugs, liquor, rock and roll. And dancing. You got it. Reverend Moore convinced the whole town council that it was all a sin, and just like that, he passed the law. Wait, Reverend Moore has that kind of power? Reverend Moore? He is the power. He is the law. And you guys tend to live like this. Practice? Here's practice? Yeah, it's not like Chicago. Must be so cool to live in a town where you can walk down a street and get mugged by people you don't even know. Yeah, I missed that. You know, I, I thought Beaumont was going to be perfect, like one big, happy family in a small town. Let me tell you about that family. There's tongues wagging every time you make a move. There's fingers pointing the minute you turn your back. There's heads shaking the minute. There's eyes everywhere. Careful what you do. Someone's on to you. Careful what you do. Careful what you say. Cause you're on display every night and every day. Somebody's hiding in the great Popped up in the register. 
Mr. Bl Dillingham came back and saw my hand in the drawer. He went crazy. He accused me of stealing. That's because everything you do makes people suspicious. Are you on drugs? No, but why don't you frisk me? I'm sure you've already poked through everything in my room. Ren, apologize to your uncle. Look, young man, I know I'm not your father. You can say that again. Yes! Ethel, hush. Don't say anything. I, I can't not say anything. I don't know how to do that, Wes. Pumpkin, hush. Please. I realize that we're guests in your house. Don't say anything. <coughs> never love to love, never be a crowd, never trust the skate, there'll be hell to pay if you've ever had. with Chuck Cranston lasts no longer than mine with Elliot Criswell. Well, Elliot Criswell was not an overheated delinquent. He most certainly was. This is not funny. I'm trying to lighten the mood. Well, I can't. I'm worried about where she is, what she's doing. I expect her to sit at home with us. Stop this conversation right here. Conversation? Bye. Seem to have walked into one of your servants. Please, let's not say anything we might regret. Choking 
she's on to you like a hog from slop. Get up. Ariel loves trouble, and you've proven to everyone in this town that you are T R U B L. Come on, I was only teasing him. That was more than teasing. Red is from out of town, and you cannot tell me that doesn't curl your toes. You wanted a Beaumont so much, you've memorized the train schedule. And you told us you only read just to escape to other worlds. Exactly. Books that get to be guys who amaze me. What about Red? What about him? Sort of smart. And kind of tall. <laughs> and I think he's handsome. You, maybe. But can he really compete with Chuck Cranston, the high school dropout slash drug dealer who was recently evicted from a trailer park? I don't think so. <laughs> Willard, what's the deal with you and Rusty? Beats me. I mean, I think she's good looking and all, but I never know what the hell she's talking about. She talks faster than any woman I've ever met. So you get her excited. <laughs> God, when he went to kiss me goodnight, he'd take the toothpick out of his mouth. <laughs> if only I could find a guy. Where have all the good men gone, and where are all the gods? Yeah. Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight the rising love?
Oh God, I'm late. Chuck's gonna lose it. Ariel, what the hell is going on? We had a date a half hour ago. Chuck, I'm sorry. I don't like being made a fool of. I'm glad you you do such a good job of it yourself. Shut up, Rusty. Will you be joining these ladies for dinner? Ariel, when I say meet me at eight, what am I, talking to myself? Oh, you're right. Calm down, honey. Don't tell me to calm down. Don't ever tell me what to do. I know what your friends think of me. They're wrong. I'm the best party in this town, baby. Those three dogs ought to be locked up under the porch. Let's go. No. Get in the truck. No! Excuse me? I said no. What part of that don't you understand? Well, when the preacher's daughter says no to me, really gets me going. Say it again, baby. Chuck, don't stop. I believe the lady said no. And I believe this is none of your business. Ren, don't. Ariel, who invited this clown? I'm sorry, I'm afraid we haven't been properly introduced. Ben McCormick. Get your hand out of my face. Get your face out of my sight. Hey, Chuck! You're looking for a fight? Let's party! Mother, don't lose me this time! Do we got a problem here? Not at all, ma'am. Chuck, we were, uh, we were just discussing the health and safety of one of your valued customers. <laughs> what? You think that's funny? Branson! Your pickup truck is parked in the handicap spot. Now, that spot is reserved for people with physical, not emotional, disabilities. You haven't seen the last of me, McCormick. Can I please kick his butt? Miller? Now what's that your mom always says? Before you go make it a fist, make sure it's your fight. Yes, ma'am. And this is not your fight. Now, don't the rest of you have a curfew? And McCormick? No, ma'am. Turn in my tie. No, ma'am. Listen to me. I'm going to see you here tomorrow after school. Really? So I'm not fired? Well, not yet, anyways. Uh, could you give me a push? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs>
Sunday. Sunday? What do you mean, Sunday? I have a feeling you've been kissed a lot. I'm afraid I'd suffer by comparison. You don't think of me much, do you? No, I think of you more than I imagined. Come on, walk in. seem to fail me is at the bridge table. <laughs> no, come on, just say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. You all know Red McCormick. Daddy. Red. How's it going, Reverend? Principal Clark, Coach Dunbar. Hey, Mrs. Dunbar. Mrs. Moore. Ren. Whoa, poker night. Cool, cool. <laughs> Ariel, we thought you were in your room. Doing your homework. Yes, well, it's difficult to impose a curfew on the young people of my congregation when I can't even seem to enforce one in my own home. Well, what's that old saying? It's the shoemaker's daughter who always goes barefoot. <laughs> oh, would you look at the time! <coughs> Boy, I sure can't empty your room, can't I? Rare talent. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. <laughs> oh, I assure you, it wasn't meant as one. I believe this is yours. Friends, thanks for, uh, you know. Walking you home? Yeah, that too. Well, Reverend, this was fun, don't you think? Yeah. 
that some young people in our community are wanting to change our laws and throw a dance. Tonight we remember that this law is not about dancing. This law is a tribute. A tribute to four young people who held the promise of Beaumont's brightest future. Two beers. I want to dance. 
I've only got two hands. Hey, Ray, can you help me out here a minute? I want to dance. Here, excuse me. Oh. Let me guess. Willard's acting weird? So it's not just me? Rusty, you and Willard have been weird since kindergarten. But tonight is different. It's the first time we've ever left Beaumont together. Maybe we don't travel well. Rusty, it's just a car ride. But that makes it kind of like a first date, don't you see? Oh, I should have seen the signs. The whole way up here, I had to do all the talking. All he was saying was, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what that means, don't you? But maybe there's a panic! Now, don't make yourself crazy. Come on, I'm asking you. You okay? Steve, you chump me. That's why I had a beer. My mom says I can have one beer or one cigarette. But if I have both, I should never come home again. Well, look, come on, what's up? You finally go up on a day with Rusty? Hold on. This is a date. You invited me and told Ariel to invite Rusty. It's more like one day with you. You look so handsome tonight. I thank you, but you stuck me in the back seat with a crazy woman who won't stop moving and talking. Well, she's excited to be with you. Yeah, that, but you see, the thing is, uh -huh. between you and me, yeah. I can't do it. Oh, it? You can't do it? No, sir. Well, well but that's okay. You don't have to do it on the first date. Right. Even in Chicago, most people didn't do it on the first date. Really? I swear. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Great. Let's dance. Dance? Dance? What the hell do you think I'm talking about? When you said you couldn't do it, I thought you meant... Oh, that! Hell, any idiot can do that! I can't do this! I can't dance! What? Did you hear that? Your boyfriend says he can't dance. Now hold on, give the guy a break. But that ain't natural. It's like grabbing a bag. It's falling off a wall. It's as easy as learning to swim. I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, fellas? We push him in the pool. Yeah! Marlon, 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 you have no idea. You know it. He never sees you in the garden.
real. She's not here, Chuck. Uh, oh, uh, Mrs. Moore. Did I scare you? No, not at all. <clears throat> uh, did you tell her that I... Yes, Chuck. I tell her every time you call. Thanks. I guess she's busy and all. She and the girls went over to Wendy Jones to study. Oh, really? I was just over there. Wendy Jones said she left hours ago with Rusty. Who was it? Ah, Mr. Cranston. You think, Reverend? I was just looking for Ariel. Isn't it a bit late, Mr. Cranston? Yes, sir. That's why I'm surprised Ariel is not home. So am I. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Cranston. And, uh, please remember. We have a front door for guests. Yes, sir. Where is she? She told me she was going to Wendy Joe's. Don't bother calling, she's not there. Did you this? I did not. So how does it feel, Vi? Now that she's lying to you, too. I'm not saying anything until I hear from her. How long can you keep defending her? I'm not defending her. We're not on opposite sides here, are we? Or are we? Where were you? Oh, Rusty and Wendy Joe and me, we were. Even we know you weren't at Wendy Joe's. I can't believe you're checking up on me. Sweetie, how do we know you're not sick or hurt? I'm concerned for your well being. Then help him when I'm at home. You're never interested in what I'm thinking or how I feel. But the minute I walk out that door, wham! Suddenly you're the concerned parent. Shaw, she doesn't. She has to start answering for herself. I don't know what good that would do. You don't listen to me any more than you listen to her!
How's my poster looking? We're trying to legalize dancing, not trick or treat. This dancing's not a crime. See, mine has some color hold to it. it. Hold it, hold it, Red. You're gonna be facing the town council, so don't mumble. <laughs> now, do that last part one more time. Members of the town council, dancing is not a crime. Yeah! 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 Ever since the dawn of time, if anything, everybody had the right to howl at the moon and to move all night. Ow! Move all night! When folks were tribal back before the Bible, they were liable to dance when the crops came in, or to pull out all the stops when the earth would spin, or maybe what? they had a battle to witness, they would dance. Every time they had the chance, whatever the season or circumstance, they found a reason to throw a party in the pants, so let's do it like they did, and dance, dance, dance! Yeah. <laughs> you said party in your pants! <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool it, cool it, friend. I'm not saying the speech is bad, it's just no good. What else am I supposed to say? I've rewritten it nine times. Well, you're gonna be facing Reverend Moore and some of the stubbornest people in town. You already got plenty of people boiling mad. Folks are picking sides. And they ain't picking yours. Who am I kidding? Maybe I ought to forget this whole thing has gotten way out of hand. Whoa, whoa there, little buddy. We didn't mean to discourage you. After all the posters we painted, all the flyers we handed out, all the people climbing the walls. So hang in there. Maybe you just gotta rethink your approach a bit. Now, Mom says that... Oh, God, oh, no! Oh, hey! Give me a minute, dear. <sighs> Everything I've ever learned That gets me through the worst I learned at my mama's knee Anytime I'm turned around I turn to mama first And you'd be wise to memorize What mama says to me Now, mama ain't been wrong yet and I'm the living proof Take that for what it's worth Mama says don't use a toaster While standing in the shower Now who can argue with that? Mama says don't hold your breath For longer than hours the woman knows where it's at. Mama says it doesn't matter if you're a king or you're a clown. Once you drive up a mountain, you can't back down. You can't back down, Ray. Now, Ray, you ain't had the pleasure of meeting my mama, but these boys have no fun. Help me out here, fellas. Mama says don't drink on coffee and lie down in bed. Don't even give it a thought. It's a mess. Mama says, never eat anything that's bigger than your head. Is she a whiz or what? Oh, yes. Mama says, she says, it doesn't matter if you're a king Mama or a clown. Once you drop a mountain, you can't back down. Oh, once you drop a mountain, Means you're ready to fight. 
Part one would fail. <laughs> now, Mom says, Don't buy a chandelier unless you've got a ceiling. Now, I don't know what that's about. Mama says, Don't chew on tin foil unless you like that feeling. Somehow she figured that out. I'd like to forget. Like? 
like this whole battle I'm causing in Beaumont, and I still don't know what I'm going to say to the town council. That reminds me. You are going to need this. The Holy Bible. I marked all the pages. Whoa, these are great. Do you know how to find all these? Are you kidding? Oh, <laughs> right. Thank you.
kind of dancing we're talking about. Just to record my Are we dance, told, excuse me, Reverend, are we told in Psalm 149 to praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord in a new song. Let them praise his name in the dance. And it was King David. King David who we read about Samuel. And what did David do? What did David do? What? What did David do? Uh, ah. David danced before the Lord with all his might, leaping and dancing before the Lord. Leaping and dancing. And Ecclesiastes assures us that there is a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to laugh and a time to weep. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to dance. There was a time for this law, but not anymore. This, this is our time. Our time to celebrate life. That's the way it was in the beginning, the way it's always been, and that's the way it should be again. Thank you. There is a motion on the floor to repeal Local Ordinance 416. How does the council vote? No. 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 The motion is defeated, and I believe this meeting is adjourned. my opinions to myself. But honey, if I don't say something, I'm gonna bust. What's there to say? I lost. The council voted and I lost. Sweetie, you never had a prayer. It's not funny, Mo. Well, when he got to the part about the leaping, the laughing, the weeping, and the dancing, which I loved, don't get me wrong. It's watching the faces of town council, and I promise you, Sean Moore had those votes locked before he even came in here tonight. Think he told them how to vote? You still sound shocked. I love that about you. But he's a man of God. He's a man. You were railroaded. Damn, that ticks me off. Good. Reverend Moore said he would reconsider only if someone convinced him there's no danger in his raucous party plans. <laughs> raucous party plans. Can you believe these people? I mean, <laughs> what? Make him reconsider. Me? You. Him? Yup. When? Now. But. Ren. Mom. Stop. Until you do. I'll never make peace with this town or that man. It convinced him in there. Wasn't listening in there. Ren Moore is a really smart man. So are you. Stubborn. And you're not? A... Look, I'd love to sit here and watch, but I have to go hose down your aunt and uncle. Love you, Mom. You have no choice. Now, go. <coughs> Good evening, Reverend. Mr. McCormick. It's late. Really? I'm wide awake. I ask you a question. They couldn't wait till morning. One question. Reverend Moore, before the council meeting tonight, did you tell the members of the council how to vote? We discussed the issue, of course. But did you tell them how to vote, Mr. McCormick? This is more did than a you? question. Reverend Moore, I know what this town has been doing. No, I don't think you do. If you did, you wouldn't have provoked your classmates into reopening wounds that have already healed. Those wounds have not healed. If they had, people wouldn't be glaring at me from across the street, they wouldn't be snubbing my mom at the market, and you wouldn't be fixing the- I thought it was time to put an end to this nonsense. Nonsense! All I say is, who's up for a little dancing? And all people can think about is the Batani Bridge and four kids. McCormick. And I know your son was one of them. And I'm sorry for your loss, I'm truly sorry. But honoring his memory by shutting out the rest of the world isn't working. I'm sure you have all the answers. No. And what? you're going to set me straight. I never said How that. can you possibly know what I've been through? You don't have a clue. Good night, Mr. McCormick. Please. If I could. Mr. McCormick, I would like to be alone. Sir, you already are. We both are. You and me, we, we both lost somebody. And even when people say they understand, they don't, really. 
that you think about it a hundred times a day. Why? I do. Wonder why my dad leave? Something I did, something I didn't do. Could I have made a mistake? Maybe I can bring him back, but I can't. I don't know if that's how you, but that's like you know. I do. So maybe I came to town frustrated and angry, and it felt really good to kick up a fuss. And I know it got people upset, and I am sorry for that. Just trying to keep moving forward. So I am so tired of looking back. I can't stand still. I've noticed. Hey, look. I'm gonna go. I know you're gonna do what you have to do about the dance and everything, but thanks for listening. Right. I'm sorry your father will never get to know you. Thanks. Daddy? Oh, I didn't hear you come down. I heard voices. That was your friend Rand. He sure asked us a lot of questions. Um, what did you tell him? You know, for once I had very little to say. I think I'm running out of answers. Daddy? I know it's hard for you, and I know I don't make it any easier. I just don't know if I believe in the same things you do, but I believe in you. Go get some sleep. We have a sermon in the morning. If I can figure out what to say. You will. When souls come to me for protection, I guide them whatever the cost. But while I've been giving direction, maybe it's me who got lost. Heaven help me find my way now. Open up my heart again Help me find the words to say now Heaven help me Oh heaven help me
We're out of here. Travis, live, Kyle, let's go. Losers. <laughs> Rusty, um, here's the deal. I could throw a clean sheet over the front seat of my pickup so that we don't end up smelling like the dogs. Uh -huh. And uh, my daddy's suit kind of fits, and I grow up with pant legs with some duct tape. I love where this is going. And my mama could whip up we one of those um, croissants. Corsage? Yeah, well then. You're painting a picture for me, I see a rusty truck that smells bad, a taped up blue suit, and a corsage made of God knows what. What do you think? Could there be a dance in there someplace? Yes, ma'am. Juana? Willard, I would love to. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> you did a good thing today, Shaw. I still don't know if it was the right thing. I think it comes pretty close. I miss you. I miss us. But you are dearer to my life than you could ever realize. If I tried to make amends, would you teach me how to start? Can you find it
please, go on.
guys are here to cheer us on. You guys are a great audience. And again, just thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. Where are you doing? No. 
that I want. Yeah, she got it. One, Every, two, three. Everything that she needs. Jump on 